again. So welcome uh, uh, to the PRAISE webinar uh, to present the new uh, peer review tool for the submission of proposals. Um, before we really start, I want to highlight that uh, the webinar is recorded in order to give others also the possibility to have a reference um, and see also afterwards what was uh, presented during the webinar. I'm Florian Berberich and it's written Praise Operations Director. So this is uh, true because uh, today the contract was signed, but still today I'm actually on vacation and previously I worked at Forschungszentrum Jülich and but I was already involved in, in Praise as a member of the Board of Directors. Okay, and I have the pleasure now to uh, present you the new price uh, peer review tool. And um, this uh, will be actually uh, two parts. One more general part to recall the price peer review process. And then uh, we will try a live demo. And then uh, we will highlight uh, the most important changes and things you have uh, to uh, be careful about. So, um, as you know, the PRAISE um, peer review process consists of several steps. So this is a first the administrative uh, check, then the technical and scientific assessment. And we will discuss then later on the key elements of the new peer review tool. And, uh, as I said, we will highlight important elements for successful submission and description of the proposal. So PRAISE provides a federated European supercomputing infrastructure that enables large computational projects in science. This is clear. And we have for this a very strict and strong transparent peer review process based only on scientific excellence and HPC competence. And um, we call these uh, resources where you get the um, cycles from the tier zero supercomputing infrastructure. So there actually we have two uh, tier zero calls per year called 22 is currently open and will be closed uh, soon on 27th October. Um, was, it was opened on the 1st September and uh, as I said, the closing date will be the 27th October and uh, with the allocation period from next year, 1st April 21 to 31st March 22. The next call, call 23, um, there are tentative uh, dates which, which need to be confirmed still. So, but it's planned to open the call on the 2nd March uh, 21 and uh, to close the call on the 27th April 21 with the allocation period from 1st October 21 to 3rd September 22. So what we are talking about today is uh, only the project access. We will not address the preparatory access, which you would also need in order to compile a successful uh, application, I guess. So for the project access, the proposal duration is uh, normally 12 months, um, a single year project, but also multi-year projects are possible, but you have to really argue why your proposal is aiming for a two or three year project. Just because it's more convenient, it will not work. So there must be really technical, scientific, administrative or whatever good reasons for uh, applying for a multi-year project. Then um, for the center of excellence, uh, a small part of the resources are reserved. It's a uh, 0.5%. And uh, CUEs are these uh, projects which uh, were selected by the 
European Commission under the eInfra 5 2015 call. So who can apply? So first, all science and scientists and researchers from academia and industry. The project leader must, however, have an employment contract as a researcher in the organization at uh, the time of the proposal submission and only research proposals of a, a civilian or non-military nature are eligible. This is also very important. And also double granting is not permitted. The proposal limited to any other HPC program will be rejected. So at the website, you'll find the current set of uh, systems and resources available for this call. I will not address this and go into the detail. Here you see a sketch of the uh, peer review process. There are, as I said, uh, two calls per year uh, with the proposal submission deadline, then the administrative check and if accepted, then it will go to the technical assessment and scientific evaluation. Uh, also important in the praise uh, process is that the applicants have the right to uh, response uh, to this assessment. Then uh, the access committee will do a ranking and then the resource allocation will produce uh, a ranked list uh, with awarded projects. And um, this uh, selection will be then approved by the board of directors and uh, the um, applicants will be informed also in case they are not awarded because there's always an uh, oversubscription. So, so now um, we come to the submission portal. Uh, you can find this under the website praisecalls.eu. And now I will switch uh, to uh, a development um, a site, uh, but this um, in order not to mess up this, uh, the proposals received for the moment for the current call, but uh, the functionality and uh, the look and feel and all it's completely uh, identic so it's the same model yeah so now the first uh, thing you have to do is uh, to log in so i did this already with my email address from Julich. need also to register and then you, you have the possibility to set a password and then uh, I did this already. A register is uh, in this field and then uh, you can actually log in. And uh, so and in the first uh, page uh, you have here uh, the open call. Uh, in, in our case it's a praise uh, uh, 22nd call for proposal for project access and the preparatory access. But we will go to this, to this call and if you click in this field, you will be available to apply to this call. If you do this, um, he, he will recall me that I um, have already uh, submitted uh, a proposal. Uh, which can be seen in the dashboard, but I want to create another one. So I choose this and now we come here to the uh, menu and uh, the, all the fields which are requested in order to submit a proposal. So there's a general information, the project, principal in, in investigator, contact person, team members, petitions, development, dissemination strategy and so on and we will move uh, step by step through this list and uh, we need to fill out um, the correspondent uh, field so as i said that it's uh, you need a good uh, argument for multi-year projects so i will uh, propose um, 
a one year duration project. It will be a first submission, but it could be also a continuation. In this case, you would be uh, then required to um, enter here the ID of the previous or the to be continued uh, project. And um, then if it's a, 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 a continuation also progress report can be uploaded here and it could be also a resubmission which should be or must be indicated here but this is also i want to create a, a new um, proposal so i don't uh, tick this box and um, then the question is if industry is involved um, we can choose here as principal investigator, team member, and both. Uh, so I will uh, choose uh, uh, industrial uh, a team member from, from industry. And then um, this will not uh, be possible in order to allow for this industry tech. You know, we reserve 10% of the resources for uh, proposals from uh, industry if the PI is coming from industry and this uh, uh, then <clears throat> dealt in this uh, 30 uh, 10 percent but this uh, will not be enough so then once we filled in this information we can save and we see here also that is saved successfully and we can move on to the next step so um, we now need to uh, give a, a project name and um, I could uh, imagine that it's about uh, uh, alloy, titanium for vanadium, six aluminium. And um, so the research field, so I want to uh, do something about uh, uh, materials and um, properties so in the first field i select uh, um, the global uh, field so it will be synthetic chemistry and materials and then i have the possibility by the way this is mandatory and this uh, more precise selection of the field is it's not mandatory but i can also browse Oops, no, this is not what I wanted uh, through the list. And I will see that um, um, probably E5 surface modification could be uh, the right uh, field. And then uh, you need to uh, indicate. Um, to what percentage your project is belong to this field. You could also add more research fields, so, but I will not uh, do this. Uh, you can enter additional uh, keywords um, like um, yeah, we can hardness, iron implantation, structural change, phase transformation, and so on. You have here to confirm that the proposal is uh, for uh, peaceful and ethical uh, purposes or civilian purposes. And you need a, a description of the project. I prepared something here already. So uh, here in this project, we investigated change of surface properties due to the phase transformation of titanium nitride at higher temperature. So now um, we can try to go to next, but we will be recalled that there is uh, information missing. So this required field, which are indicated with a star, you really need to fill out. So we take only one research field, so we can enter 100. And we need also um, to upload here the project uh, scope and plan document uh, the and then if you hmm, click here you you will um, be able only to upload pdf files so this is a, a, a form you can find on the praise website 
but also the link will be given in the presentation later on. So this you have to upload here and then we can uh, save and we see that it's now successful because we filled out all uh, required uh, steps and we can go to the next one. So um, the principal investigator, let's say it's a male and a professor and uh, we use um, I know you have to Donald and Duck in two words. So, and initial is a DD. And uh, here you have to be careful also, this is a American um, syntax. So first the month, uh, let's say December 20, 1999, a young researcher. And email is dd at duck research. And nationality, um, let's take uh, German. So you have here for the nationality, you have a, a list where you can choose from. Phone number is not. Um, in needed but job title so same and for instance and in order to avoid um that uh, uh you are not in an employment anymore when the proposal would be awarded you have also to confirm that your employment contract um, or the, from the principal investigator is uh, valid for more than three months after and allocation. And uh, the um, organization name is Duck Okay. Good, then the, the some questions, organization with research activity, definitely yes. An organization head office in Europe, also yes. And uh, here you have also to specify the percentage of R&D in Europe versus total R&D. And since we are completely European, we can enter your 100. Uh, organization department is, um, um, Service research uh, organization address is um, uh, in eight eight nine five uh, Entenhausen. Yeah, and the country is uh, Germany. Good. And we can save it and we see it's all nice, all filled out and go to the next uh, step. There is a contact person indicated in case it's uh, not the principal investigator. Aber in, uh, now in our case it's the same and it's DG at uh, search .eu. and we can go to the next one and team member so we will add only one in order not to spend too much uh, uh, time uh, we can choose here title name first name uh, Robert. Initial is also DD and also uh, in May 20, uh, 
an email is uh, now complicated. That that you nationality. We make it fully German proposal, but you can choose here each uh, um, nationality which you need and um, junior research okay organization name is research surface And you need to also organization address is um, and whatever and we use also. We can save it and see that all information is uh, listed and fine. And we can move on to the next uh, step. By the way, you can, of course, add here as many uh, team members as you want. So um, here we have to choose uh, then a system where we want uh, to do the simulation and uh, we use uh, the Marconi 100 system, for instance, in Italy. And um, the code, it's uh, our own written development and code. It's a DE phase trans. And you could add more. And now you have to enter here all uh, details on the resources required and uh, uh, the course and memory and number of files you want to write and uh, shift around. So I will do this uh, quite quickly. And uh, then, in order to move on, uh, we will use uh, 75 million, let's see, yeah, core hours and uh, none for the second year and none for the third year because it's a one year uh, project. And um, we want to run 50 jobs simultaneously and uh, the wall clock time is four hours. And yes, we are able to write checkpoints and uh, the uh, time is one hour. The minimum course is um, let's say five. Thousand average core is twenty thousand, and here we have as a forty two thousand minimum job memory in. Uh, Total usage of all course in, in gigabyte, it's uh, 50 and uh, uh, average job memory is uh, 100, maximum is 200 and uh, maximum amount of scratch needed. Uh, 500 and uh, maximum amount of work of work needed at time uh, 200 maximum amount of home needed uh, 
600 maximum archive also 600 and maximum files to be stored on scratch in thousand or uh, fifty thousand maximum of number of files stored in the work it's a uh, hundred thousand maximum files stored in the home it's uh, one thousand and maximum files stored in archive it's uh, 5,000 and total amount of data to transfer to from in gigabyte it's um, 500 and uh, you need also to give um, an um, explanation and justification for the data transfer and how we say we need it and uh, you also need uh, to indicate um, uh, the IO strategy and you think we think still think about it by the way these are not good answers for a successful proposal and um, then uh, EO data traffic uh, read write per hour 500 and uh, files generated uh, per hour also 500 so you if you apply for more petition you can do this here by adding here a petition add petition so in our case now just to demonstrate it it's okay it's fine and uh, we can move to the next step uh, the development uh, this should include uh, uh, the description of the main algorithm, how they have been implemented and parallelized, and the main performance bottlenecks, and so on. And um, um, here you need to explain the name and version. So we just uh, say it's uh, the TE phase trans, and we save it and go to the next step dissemination strategy. Um, yeah, we can say we will publish it in the news and we go on collaboration and funding um, is uh, any part of the project uh, covered by confidentiality yes it is um, um, and we need also to explain why and we say this is a simply top secret and but we have no additional funding and no international collaboration no national funding and also no other funding we can save it and move on to the next here you can uh, suggest uh, uh, reviewers um, uh, this is uh, optional uh, but um, uh, we could um, propose here uh, Mickey Mouse uh, and uh, this email address and uh, it's a uh, affiliation it's new research you can enter up to three suggestions for reviewers you can save it move on to the next but you can also then in this step exclude reviewers. So reviewers you want not want uh, uh, to have, and uh, we could uh, exclude Titanium Hero um, from TT Titanium dot. and um, if indicate also the affiliation you also have here the possibility to indicate uh, up to three reviewers you want to exclude you can go to the next step and now um, it's already the last step and uh, here you have to accept the term of reference these are in 
you can find this uh, in this uh, link and then you have to accept it and now uh, a very important point to note is if you now uh, press your submit then the proposal will be submitted and cannot change anymore so it will ask you after submission you can't edit this step again you can use the save button to keep the process before the final submission so if you i will again cancel if you press here save you will find the proposal in the dashboard and you can still add information or edit information but if you push submit then it's submitted and you get here the notification you have successfully submitted project with a number and uh, thank you for your submission in the dashboard you can also the the here this new uh, proposal i submitted and then you can see here the process how this uh, will be evaluated until the review feedback do you have any comments or questions to the tool now? So this seems not to be the case. Then I will stop sharing this and switch again to the... There is a question. Uh, someone is asking what is continuation means for a project? Ah, if um, at the very beginning, if, if you take this. Mm. So I'm not 100% sure, but um, I think uh, if you... Um, we um, follow up from the previous yeah. proposal and then you should also mention what is the previous proposal and give the, uh, the proposal ID. So, uh, hi, I'm Mila Kolosar and I asked this question, is that uh, actually I had a previous proposal which was in similar topic. So in one sense it's a continuation, but it's not a multi-year project, so I should take continuation then. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Similar question on the continuation. I, I submitted a project last year and uh, now uh, I delayed due to the COVID-19 uh, uh, problems and uh, I, I would like to uh, submit to continue the, this uh, project in the, in the next year. It is a, a submission, a continuation uh, or my project was of, uh, of one year. If the project is a continuation of what you were doing before, I would still label it as a continuation and I would still put in the, the, the ID of the previous proposal because what can happen is also that they are going to check, we are going to check whether, uh, I mean, what are the achievement of the previous part and what are the, what is that you want to do new because it cannot be simply a, an identical proposal to the previous one. There must be, unless you really didn't manage to do anything, okay, that's a different story. But then you have to justify uh, why you didn't manage to do anything. So I think that if it uh, basically the proposal with uh, something new and something done, I would still label as a continuation. But in my case, my project just finished at the end of September, so obviously I didn't yet do the, the project uh, closing, reporting and so on. Um, so you cannot know if I submit, I mean, if I was successful or not really, except that you, you can definitely see that I used up all my credits. Is that something that is okay because I won't be able to do this in a few weeks, the reporting as well, the new application, I have time till February. Mm -hmm. I just uh, mentioned something. Uh, the continuation can be a continuation of a proposal uh, project that is ongoing. And uh, a continuation proposal should uh, um, 
applicants to continuation proposal should submit a um, continuation or a final report together with submission of the, of the new uh, project. A resubmission is a proposal that you resubmit. So this means that you were not awarded previously, but you are willing to, uh, to, to keep going with the project that you wrote and that, and that you submitted and you were not awarded. Okay, so if I choose continuation, because that's what really I would like to do, I did the job that I first proposed and now we would like to continue this research, then I need to write at least a basic report about the previous project. Indeed, indeed. So write a proposal, your yes. continuation proposal, and uh, in addition, submit a progress report or a final report. So if your project is still ongoing, you should submit um, a progress report. Well, it's just finished, but writing the full final report in such a short time will be difficult. You, you have uh, up to six months to submit the final report to us yes, after not, the end of the deadline. But not this, propo not this proposal, so if I have to submit it together, then it will be 27 for both of them. Okay. If I understood you. This is Oriol from the Board of Directors as well. So the objective here is that uh, if you submit a, a continuation project, the Access Committee will check your previous project, will check the progress you had them. So, uh, and that's uh, another value for you. It's not a project that starts, but it builds on the previous one. So you need to provide some kind of progress report, final report to them to really value this, this asset, okay? Uh, so in, in your case, that you need to provide something, otherwise they will not be able to judge if really this continuation is, is worth it or not. So that's the, the objective of the continuation. Okay, but then it can be just, let's say, so a, a reduced report compared to the final report. That is a yes. month. So uh, everything that will help the, the reviewers on the access committee to, to assess that really this continuation, that the previous project was successful, and that this continuation is, uh, is worth it. Uh, it doesn't need to be the full final report uh, that is usually later in time. Thank you very much. Okay. Are there other questions? So if this is not the case, I would like to continue the presentation, though we saw the live demo. And now to, to recall what is new. So um, you can save every step of the process and uh, prevent so the loss of data. You can also revisit each step as often as needed. You can upload documents only in PDF format, delete them, change them and upload them again. There is no problem. But as I indicated, please be aware that the submit step is final and then applicants can no longer unsubmit the proposal. Also, um, uh, applicants should edit uh, uh, the proposal draft in the dashboard and make correction changes rather than apply again with a new proposal. Otherwise, the proposal draft will remain in the dashboard as an unsubmitted proposal. So this is also important. So then I showed you then if there is an error or information is uh, missing, um, then it's indicated and without correcting all errors, the applicant will not be able to complete the submission. Um, very important, as I said also, you will uh, need to download the project scope and plan template from the PRAISE website since documents are not available in the new tool yet. So um, here you find the address where you can download uh, the uh, corresponding form. And um, you can search in the buff page for call related documents. Um, and then uh, uh, to remind you that you are requested to follow the template and you should also read the technical description 
very carefully. So, and you should provide the information on all of the sub sections. If you wish to leave a section empty, then you need to provide a reason. And uh, the information should be suitable for expert review in your field, but also appropriate for a broader audience. Your proposal will be evaluated by a panel with proposals in other disciplines. Be aware of this as well. So here again, the technical guidelines, please read them and uh, uh, apply to the right system and uh, follow the technical guidelines. You are expected to carefully read the technical guidelines of the systems they intend, you intend to apply for and pay attention to the job characteristics, I.O. implementation, storage requirements and data transfer plan. Um, they really have to comply with what is written in the technical guidelines for each individual tier zero system. So now to the peer review process, to the administrative check, um, proposal not complying with the praise eligible criteria will be rejected. Uh, for instance, a very a stupid thing, if a um, curriculum uh, is missing or the publication list is missing or the wrong template or too long and so on. So please, be careful and respect all the limits and make sure that all uh, re requested documents are included. Then the technical assessment. First then the proposals will be reviewed by the technical expert of the price hosting member sites to assess uh, the suitability on their system and they know the best what is going to run on the systems or not. And if there are doubts, so applicants may be contacted by technical experts in case of questions or concern raised during the review. The technical data need to be provided for the targeted system. So the scientific assessment. So each proposal is assigned to three scientific peer reviewers to assess. First of all, is the scientific merit. Then soundness of numerical methods, algorithm and computational tools, appropriateness of project timeline and resources, feasibility of a search plan and qualifications, expertise and track record of the PI and the team. Now this will be all evaluated. The access committee. So each proposal is then assigned uh, to two members of the praise access committee as rapporteur one and rapporteur two who suggest scientific peer reviews and solicit reviews assess returned reviews discuss discrepancies in the gardening of the proposals and agree on a common grade so this is done in the access committee and the scientific excellence is a single decisive criterion. So um, the proposals are ranked then uh, according to the grade for the Rapporteur 1 and Rapporteur 2 consensus and the proposals below certain sessions are rejected unless any member of the access committee wishes to discuss them further. So in the meeting every proposal is discussed in the presence of the full access committee as follows. So Rapporteur Bron presents the proposal objectives, strengths and weaknesses uh, and reports grades. Technical members discuss the feasibility of the project. Rapporteur Two makes further remarks and may propose an alternate grade and all access committee members discuss the proposals and ask questions to Rapporteur 1 and Rapporteur 2. And then after this discussion, Rapporteur 1 proposes a score followed by a score by the access committee chair. And in case of agreement, it becomes a tentative score of the proposal in case of a disagreement, there 
will be a vote. So uh, proposals then are rediscussed when similarities are found with other proposals and grades may be revised. And at the end, uh, the final access committee session, this, <clears throat> there is a discussion and provision of the final ranking of all proposals. You have to be aware that this uh, process takes several days. So there's really intense discussion and enormous effort spent by the access committee members and reviewers, of course, as well, to evaluate uh, the proposals. Once uh, the list is prepared, there will be then the resource allocation panel. This is the final step of the review process. The panel decides on allocation based on recommendation of the access committee, for sure, but also considers constraints on praise resources and administrative constraints and agreements of praise partners. And uh, <clears throat> then with uh, the final uh, proposed list from the resource allocation panel, the praise board of directors confirms the final allocation. So this is a process and you can find further information that I really recommend to read in depth and carefully all these documents. So the praise application procedure available to zero supercomputing systems, project scope and plan, this uh, form we discussed already earlier and uh, also very important the technical guidelines for applicants <laughs> updated for call 22 you have to be aware that the technical guidelines and for applicants are each time updated corresponding to the systems available at a certain call with this um, i covered all what i wanted to report on the nice new praise peer review tool um, and i would open the floor for further questions if there are any please please feel free to ask now hello i have two questions i'm francois Covazier from france I would like to know if a we already submitted a um, in progress report. I think it was in April, but our um, allocation finishes uh, very soon. I think it is in November. Should we send a an updated um, an updated progress report, or should it be the same progress report as we submitted uh, last April or May? Yes, I don't know. I would like to ask uh, Oriol or Maria Grazia. I would say that an upgraded, an updated uh, report is always better because you have the latest uh, information. And I mean, is uh, if it's a resubmission, if it no, let's be clear, because a resubmission, there are two two options in the praise uh, uh, application. One is continuation and one is resubmission. And I just want to make clear that for the continuation, if you intend to apply with a proposal that is a continuation of an ongoing one, I mean, provide as much information as you have in your reports and then it's clear that it's not complete especially if your proposal is still ongoing for the resubmission you don't need any report because the resubmission means that you submitted you were not granted and so you are resubmitting the proposals the or proposal so yeah. I, I i that would be my feedback okay thank you very much in fact the the, the other half question is our um in our case we were granted so there is no the question is is only on the um on whether we put it as a continuation or not as a continuation in fact scientifically it is in line so the it goes it is the next step so in my opinion this should be continuation but is there uh, a priority is it better to have to place our research uh, the 
the new uh, proposal in continuation or as a completely fresh uh, new project? How is the evaluation different? The evaluation is not different, but I mean, the, the uh, access committee, actually, I saw some, some, I saw the vice chair of the access committee in the, in the list of participants. So if, uh, if they want to intervene, they are more than welcome, <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, because this is more for, for, for the access committee. Uh, the access committee is interested in the results of previous allocations. Because if you keep submitting your proposal, a new proposal, they still are interested in understanding how successful you have been with the previous allocations. So, I mean, even if you submit a brand new proposal, but you have had previous uh, praise allocations, they are still interested in understanding what was the outcome of the previous allocations. Marco, Maria Paola, I also saw Maria Paola in there, but uh, uh, if Mark wants to add something, you're more than welcome. I don't know if it's uh, clear what I say. It's not like, uh, it, it is important for praise to understand how the previous allocations have been used and how successful applicants have been used in the previous allocation. With that, I'm not saying that you're going to be rejected just because maybe a previous proposal was not successful enough, but at least you could provide also information of why it was not successful. Okay, thank you very much. Further questions? This is a unique opportunity. Uh, Florian, I can have a, oh, please, please, please. I can have just a short question on the corresponding uh, address, email address. Uh, in, the, in the previous uh, application, uh, uh, in the I, I put in the, in the corresponding address uh, the, a backup address, uh, even if uh, uh, from uh, some years there is uh, that uh, was the unique, uh, uh, the unique address uh, for the correspondence. But uh, uh, I, I also, I, as a principal investigator, I received I receive, also I received the copy of, of this mail. In the, in the last one, in, uh, in March, uh, the, the mail was sent just to the, the uh, as, it, as it was written, just to the others I insert in the form. And now I, I will ask if uh, this is the possibility to have a backup address to, for, uh, for, uh, for the email. For example, if, uh, if I have some problem in, in my institutional email, and uh, unfortunately I had in the, in the last month, uh, if there is another address when I can receive the same communication. Yeah, we can check on that and come back to you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Florian, if I may uh, make just a general comment, because this is a new tool, uh, there might be some things that uh, are not working as we expected them to work. So we would appreciate feedbacks anyway, because uh, we will, uh, we hope that there are not so many, but if there is something that is not behaving as expected, we would appreciate if the applicants let us know. Yeah, sure. Thank you. This, this thing happens in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the former tool. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but now, now I think it's uh, uh, maybe it's uh, a good feature to have uh, an, uh, a backup address for the email where Absolutely. I can receive the same communication. If uh, my email is not working, uh, usually my no, usually in, uh, in my my institution, my university change changed the email system and switched to Microsoft and it's not working and so on. and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I, 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 I lose, I lose, uh, uh, I lose some mates. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We, we will. Uh, thank you for the feedback. We'll, uh, maybe I, I can say my institutional mail and my Gmail address, for example, or the the or, or uh, an email of uh, one of my collaborators. 
Sorry, but I need to go now because I have a previous, another commitment. Mm. Yeah. Are there further questions? So thank you, Maria Grazia. I have just one question. Uh, can we have this presentation? Yeah, yeah, sure. Though you will find um, on the website uh, the full recorded webinar uh, together with the presentation. Yes. Yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. So if there are no further questions, I thank you all for your attendance and I wish you uh, fun with the new Praise Peer Review tool and I hope that uh, um, not so many bugs, if any, so that this uh, tool was tested carefully before, of course, um, will be still there, but I think it should be okay and I invite you to uh, use the new tool and submit your proposals and uh, yeah then I cross all the fingers that uh, you will be successful and your proposals will be selected. I wish you a nice afternoon and uh, a good day. Stay safe and healthy. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.